Welcome to the RMS Pump Tools Training Guide. This video will explain the installation procedure for a flexible split phase wellhead penetrator system. Use this video, together with the installation instructions, to familiarize yourself with the installation procedure of the product. You will then be asked to undertake a short test of 10 questions with multiple choice answers. Upon successful completion of the test, you will be issued with an RMS Pump Tool Certificate. Feel free to take notes throughout the video to aid you during the test. Installing the Penetrator System The installation procedure comprises four main stages. Installing the hanger fittings, fitting the downhole cable connectors, fitting the flexible connectors and fitting the surface connectors. Before commencing, you should familiarize yourself with the components using the system datasheet for reference. Always ensure you are wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment, PPE, for the environment in which you are working. Important installation guidelines All equipment should be inspected in advance of installation. Do not remove the penetrator components from their box or drum until they are ready to be installed. Instead, carefully open the packaging to inspect penetrator components and any accessories. When handling any RMS pump tools penetrator, it is paramount that the utmost care is taken. Ensure the components are not subject to abrasion or impact. Any damage could affect the sealing surfaces or threads and compromise the performance of the system. Throughout this demonstration, only one phase has been shown for simplicity. Installing the hanger fittings. Inspect and clean each of the hanger bores using the pull-through tool provided. This will remove any dirt and moisture present in the bore. An electrical cleaning fluid can be used, examples of which are referenced in the installation instructions. Chlorinated solvents should not be used. Feed the spring over the combined insulator sleeve and feed into each of the hanger bores. This should be pre-assembled with a wiper seal and o-ring. Coat the tapered threads of the lower hanger fitting using a suitable thread sealant and tighten into the hanger bores using the socket and 30mm spanner. Always ensure that one of the two NPT pressure test ports is accessible on each fitting. Then fit the blanking cap to each lower fitting with the tapered edge first. If installation guides have been supplied, fit one into each of the hanger bores. These should be fitted from the top side and orientated with the tapered edge uppermost. Coat the tapered threads of the upper hanger fittings with a suitable thread sealant and fit into the upper side bores. Fit blanking caps to each upper hanger fitting. If using a liquid thread sealant, ensure this is left to cure for the minimum recommended time before proceeding to the next stage. In order to pressure test each of the three bores, remove one of the NPT plugs from each of the lower hanger fittings and attach the pressure test equipment. Loosen the highest blanking cap from each bore to assist air bleeding, then, using the pump, Fill the bores with the supplied silicon oil. Retighten the blanking caps when oil begins to show at the fittings. Pressure test as per the rating specified on the system datasheet or installation instructions. Upon completion of the test, slowly relieve pressure, carefully remove the pressure test equipment, and release the blanking caps to allow the oil to drain. Once all bores have been drained of silicon oil, Retighten all upper and lower blanking caps to prevent any contamination of the bores. Finally, refit the NPT plugs to each of the lower hanger fittings, but do not tighten fully at this stage. Fitting the downhole connector. With the hanger connected to the tubing string and at a suitable working height, slacken off but do not remove the upper blanking caps. This will allow the air to escape while installing the downhole connector. Remove the lower blanking caps from the hanger bores to allow any excess oil to thoroughly drain. 
remove the transit caps from the downhole connector and fit each connector assembly into the bores, ensuring the phases do not cross. Tighten the connector nuts onto the lower hanger fittings using the 30mm flare nut spanner. Mark the cable tail for splicing, then remove the downhole connectors and refit the lower blanking caps and transit caps. The lower connector assembly can now be spliced to the main cable run and the completion electrically tested using the supplied RMS pump tools test leads. Upon completion of the splice, refit the downhole connectors as previously outlined and secure the upper blanking caps to prevent contamination of the bores. At this stage, another pressure test through the lower hanger fittings should be conducted to verify seals. Again, remove one of the NPT pressure plugs in each of the lower hanger fittings and attach the pressure test equipment as before. Fully unscrew the upper blanking caps, ensuring the threads are disengaged before pressure testing as per the rating specified on the system datasheet or installation instructions. Upon completion, slowly relieve pressure and remove the pressure test equipment. Apply thread sealant to the NPT pressure plugs and refit to each of the lower hanger fittings, tightening fully. The completion should be electrically tested using the supplied RMS pump tools test leads before retightening the upper blanking caps. The tubing hanger is now ready to be landed. Fitting the flexible connectors. After the BOP stack and riser have been removed, it is critical to prevent any water from entering the electrical connection and therefore any water present on the top of the tubing hanger should be removed. Remove the lower transit sleeves from each of the flexible connectors and inspect for signs of damage or moisture ingress. Remove the upper blanking caps before carefully inserting the flexible connectors into each bore gently rotating to aid fitting. Fully tighten the fitting nut using the special crow's foot spanner provided. Once all three flexible connectors are fitted, remove the upper transit caps and carry out an electrical test using the supplied RMS pump tools test leads. Refit the upper transit covers and insert a plastic guide rod into each of the connectors. Slightly bend the flexible connectors so that the ends of the guide rods can self-locate in the bores of the tubing head adapter as it is lowered. Carefully land the tubing head adapter on top of the wellhead. Once the tubing head adapter has been fully secured, remove the guide rods but leave the upper transit caps in place to protect the contact pins. Apply thread sealant to the bonnet adapters, screw into the tubing head adapter and tighten using the 1 to 3 quarter inch spanner. To prevent rotation of the flexible connector when installing the bonnet adapter and lock nut, screw the two M22 nuts provided into the flexible connector and nip them together. This will allow them to grip the flexible connector. Hold in place with another 1 to 3 quarter inch spanner when tightening the bonnet adapter or lock nut. Screw the taper collar over each flexible connector followed by the lock nut. The two M22 nuts can be used to prevent rotation. After fully tightening the lock nut with the 1 to 3 quarter inch spanner, check that the machined groove in the thread on the flexible connector is visible above the lock nut. The completion should now be electrically tested. Following the electrical test, the tubing head adapter cavity can be pressure tested as per the wellhead manufacturer's instructions. The electrical test should be repeated and the transit covers replaced until the surface connectors are ready to be installed. Fitting the surface connectors. Remove the transit covers from both the flexible connector and the surface connector. Ensure the pin and socket regions are free from moisture and contamination. Apply a generous ring of the supplied white electrical compound 
around the tapered insulating socket on each surface connector. Secure each surface connector to the flexible connectors and hand tighten the fix ring. Fully tighten using the C spanner. To verify the engagement, the lower edge of the surface connector should sit parallel with the groove machined into the thread of the flexible connector. An electrical test should now be carried out on the completion. To prevent the surface connectors from being accidentally removed, fit the M4 cap head screws. Operation and redress. When cleaning any threads or internals of the equipment, it is recommended to use a suitable solvent degreaser and a clean, lint-free cloth. In the event that any of the elastomer seals have been damaged, they must be replaced with the spares provided. To redress, locate the spare seal pack and remove the previous O-rings and backup rings. Ensure the grooves are clean and dry before fitting any new seals. To aid fitting of the backup rings, slightly contract the rings relative to the groove diameter. Silicon grease, or similar, should also be used to aid the fitting of both the O-rings and backup rings. For disassembly, ensure the system is completely de-energized and allow the surface connector sufficient time to cool for safe handling before untightening the M4 socket head cap screw and removing the surface connector. Remove the lock nuts from the flexible connectors followed by the taper collar. After a period of use, the flexible connector may become slightly contracted, making it difficult to remove the taper collar. To aid removal, fit the slide hammer connection from the toolkit and screw the slide hammer studding into the connection. Slide the weight over and fit the M4 nut near the top. Strike the nut with the weight to release the taper collar and remove along with the bonnet adapter. This concludes the RMS Pump Tools Training Guide. A short test will now follow.